Lee Child is the pen name of writer Jim Grant. A lot can be said about his career as an author. I had heard plenty of good things, so when I saw a copy of Killing Floor at one of my bookstores, I had to check it out. Killing Floor was Child's debut mystery novel and was the introduction of popular character Jack Reacher, who was later portrayed by Tom Cruise in the self-titled movie. Reacher has been featured in 20 different novels and several short stories by Child as well. The novel was published in 1997 and made some pretty big waves. It won the 1998 Anthony Award and the 1998 Barry Award, both for Best First Novel. The Jack Reacher novels have topped the New York Times bestseller list numerous times, and Lee Child has become very successful because of it. Reacher is an ex-military policeman who spends his time wandering the country, just enjoying himself after an entire life dedicated to strict military codes and procedure. His past experience certainly makes a good case for him to go about solving the occasional murder mystery, but how does he fare as a character, and how is the story in Killing Floor? The answer to both is... not that great. The story starts off with Reacher getting off a bus in the middle of bumfuck nowhere, Georgia, when a police squad arrests him for murder. As the investigation clears him, since he wasn't in town at the time of the murder, Reacher goes from stoic bystander to angry badass, trying to solve this vicious mystery. Without going too far into details, because it is a mystery story after all, the crime centers around a group of unknown assailants who kill not only the first victim, but several others throughout the novel. But aside from simply being killed, the victims are also brutalized way beyond anything a rational person would do. For example, a regular assassin might just put a bullet in your head. But these guys literally nail a man to a wall, gut him, rape his wife in front of him, then force feed her his testicles before slitting her throat and letting the man bleed out. I mean, Jesus! I think they passed overkill about three steps back. However, when you learn what all these guys are doing that actually initiated all these murders, the savagery of these killings really looks askew. I'll go into more details about that later. Reacher tells the story through a first-person perspective. He brushes almost all of life's problems off in a very aloof manner, and shrugs at every other question asked of him. I'm serious, he shrugs so often that I was worried he was going to dislocate his shoulder. His character is a mix of Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sherlock Holmes. The problem with him is he's kind of a Gary Stew. He shows remarkable marksmanship, and considering his military background, that makes sense. But not so much that it would explain how he can snipe people from the other side of a warehouse with a desert eagle. And some of the leaps in logic he makes when he's figuring things out are nothing short of cheating. Hell, one answer he found near the end of the book, which I won't reveal here, don't worry, sounded like he pulled the answer right out of his ass even as he was explaining it. The fun part of reading or watching a mystery is being able to follow the clues along with the main character and solve it with them, or at least understand how everything adds up. When the author has to give his protagonist omnipotence, it takes away from that fun. Reacher even gets the hottest woman in town two days after arriving. Someone please tell me how this guy isn't just a simple power fantasy character. For anyone who asks though, I haven't seen the movie yet so I can't compare Tom Cruise's portrayal to the character from the book. Fortunately, this problem wasn't as prevalent in the supporting cast. First is Finley, a Boston detective who transferred to the small police station for a change of pace. I found that he was the most relatable person in the book, was still good at his job, and helped Reacher advance the plot when he had to. The next is Roscoe, the hot young policewoman who falls for Reacher at first sight. She spent about half the book at Reacher's side, helping him put the small pieces together, and supported him however she felt she had to, like giving him a place to stay. She was okay, but aside from the small notes of local information which Reacher couldn't have possibly known on his own, she was more of a damsel to be won, which Reacher accomplished by page 85 or so. Every other character was strictly one note and served a single purpose with minimal depth. Like the cop, or the mayor, or the barber, or the other cop, or the town jerk. Aside from our main three, and one other character I'll get to later, every character can be summed up in a single noun. But if the characters were lackluster, did the prose bolster the book at all? No. Just no. To me, the writing came off as strictly amateur. Short sentences led to more short sentences and the prose was choppy and weak. The book even contains the sentence, it was about as distinctive as the most distinctive thing you could ever think of. That sounds more like a placeholder sentence, something you put in temporarily and plan on fixing later. I don't know who the editor was for this book, but missing something like this makes it sound like he was asleep at the wheel. A few fight scenes do add to the excitement every now and then, but between them, the book is really just a weak mystery with a few character points and clues thrown in. 
At this point, I am going to mention the ending of the book and reveal the solution to the mystery, so if you want to skip all of that and go straight to the rating, click here. Throughout the book, the band of assailants that Reacher opposes is slowly identified one by one. So, who are they? What lies at the heart of this group of ten violent murderers? It's... a counterfeiting operation. So yeah, the incredibly gory murders are being committed by white-collar criminals in some backwater town. Even worse, the book presses the importance of finding out who the members of this group are. We only really learn who six or seven of them are, and the book is wildly inconsistent even there. The members who don't get ID'd are just nameless cops, but the group also hires outside help like various hitmen and the assistant warden of the prison. If some of the core group aren't even going to be named, then how do we tell them apart from the contract killers that they hire? And then there were the psychic powers that Reacher develops that I talked about before. Multiple times throughout the book, Reacher pulls answers out of thin air, using the flimsiest of logic, but perhaps the worst example was near the end when he had to find a man who had gone into hiding away from the band of criminals. Okay, get this. Paul Hubble fled the town for five days and stayed at different hotels night after night. Reacher not only found out which town Hubble was staying in, but also which hotel he was in and the false name Hubble was using. Apparently Hubble was a casual fan of the Beatles, something you could easily glance over when the book introduced it, so of course he was using names like Paul Lennon when he checked in. Not only did Reacher figure this out, but he did so in less than a few hours while his girlfriend and Finley were being held under the threat of execution and after he had narrowly escaped the gang's strongman. I was about ready to toss the book across the room when I read that part. Overall, I did not care for this book. The character had too little character, the author solved his problems for him, and the plot was a contrived mess. I could understand why some people might enjoy it, what with Reacher being a power fantasy character and all. Plus, the action scenes were decent, but for me, the book gets a meh. Some people might enjoy it, but I'm not one of them. So, have you read the book? What did you think? If not, do you want to read it now? Comment below and stay tuned for more.